resting. It has that curly Q shape to its, well, curly Q is kind of wrong. It's got a distinctive way that it moves its tail almost into a question mark. That's kind of how one of my cats likes to keep her tail. <laughs> it always kind of curls over in a very distinctive way. <laughs> oh wow, I wonder if these are some of the pink corals that um, uh, Sebastian was talking about. Yeah, it might be. Sebastian, you there in the lounge? <laughs> <laughs> we loved it when we uh, came across the Tina 4. Yeah, look at all the associates on that one. Oh. Could we zoom in on this? Zoom in. It looks like we've got two generations of sponges, maybe, and then uh, one of these oh, corals wow. It's just full of associates. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a lot of uh, ophroids. Yeah, look how delicate that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that does look like a primnoid. Oh, and there's a mushroom mush coral behind it. Yeah. yeah, I don't think we're seeing this one further down. No, no. It's interesting. It looks like the polyps can be both upwards and downwards facing. Mostly, there's almost looks like there's three on a branch. Wow. Oh, shrimp babies all around it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, sure oh, enough. Shrimp Hi, babies. Good spot, Zach. Are they some kind of amphipod? So tiny. They look so busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are. I thought they were amphipods, but they look like shrimp. They have like a little um, that distinctive tail on them. Yeah. yeah, they do. It's like a little little town, a little busy coral city. Kind of reminds me of how bees fly around when they're uh, collecting pollen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those look a little bit like shrimp, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whole little nursery there. Excellent, thank you. Dude, uh, somewhat thinner manganese crust here. I can pretty clearly see vesiculation in the rocks. So he's uh, had a high enough uh, partial pressure of gas is dissolved in the melts that uh, once they erupt it out, you could it could actually. Uh, you can actually get bubbles forming in the melt once they're erupted, despite the uh, uh, despite the uh, pressure from the water at this depth. You know how I know the coffee hasn't kicked in for us yet? Quiet. We haven't introduced ourselves yet. <laughs> <laughs> I was just giving you guys time. <laughs> then you wake up. Then you wake up. 
I guess I'll start off since I, I was the one who mentioned it. Um, Val Finlayson, I'm uh, the watch lead and one of the geologists on board. I'm a postdoc at the University of Maryland and I do a lot of isotope geochemistry on seamounts just like this one. Daniel Kinzer, science communication fellow, call Honolulu Hawaii home, and uh, work for an amazing group called Purple Maia Foundation, uh, bringing culturally based, Hawaiian culturally based uh, technology and science and entrepreneurship and innovation education to Hawaiian youth across the islands. It's a pleasure to be here with you all. My oh. Aloha kakahiaka, o mehna lemi kavaleri ko inoa no ahu mayo. Good morning everyone, my name is Mehna Lemi, I'm from the island of Oahu. Uh, thank you for joining us today as we explore another Mauna Kai seamount in Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. Um, we are northwest of Holaniku um, and really excited to explore with you all today. Mahalo. Um. <clears throat> Sorry, I think I caught that little highlight right there. Was it like a red coral? Yeah, and I uh, didn't realize that my mic was muted, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, Thanks. Thanks for catching it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm Virginia. I forget to turn my mic on <laughs> regularly. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I am, uh, I think this might be it. I think so. Um, I'm an uh, uh, ecologist. I study um, deep sea seamounts and the communities that live on them. Um, I'm currently interested in this, uh, what I'm thinking might be a paragorgid, but from afar you can never really tell, um, <clears throat> coral at the moment. And I, um, I have had the privilege to study communities on the Northwest Island Hawaiian, Northwestern Hawaiian Ridge and Southern Emperor Seamount Chain. Um, and that does look like a paracorgid, which is exciting with a, yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm a, a PhD student and I'm just so excited to be here and to be a part of this. It's pretty amazing, so awesome. We love it when your mic's on, Virginia. <laughs> yes, uh. Is that a cup coral there? Yeah, it looks like there's a couple cup corals. There's This is a nice looking chrysocorchia with a Beautiful shrimp. Beautiful one. There's a squat there. There's some barnacles growing on that. On that. Um, Look at all these friends. <laughs> this, is a this is a happening part of town. It yeah. is. It really is. It's pretty amazing. And it's just a, it's on a boulder, you know? Yeah, that's that's how this works. Nice vesicular basalt. Mm -hmm. There's a, it looks like that might be that primnoa that we saw again. With the, and some of the dead sponge that was, um, Sebastian was talking about earlier. That's pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. It looks like a hydroid. Oh no, that's that's my idea. Oh yeah, that's great. Yeah, there's oh, and that's the big barnacle. Oh yeah, that is a big barnacle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sure enough. So that's cool. amazing. <coughs> more squat lobsters. Man, whole neighborhood showed mm -hmm. up. Ah, Sako says gooseneck barnacle. Gooseneck. Exciting. Oh, it's called a peduncle on, on barnacles, too. I didn't know that. Mm. Not, not just uh, sea pens. Yeah. Peduncle? That's I love that term. Peduncle is actually a very commonly used term. I, there are caudal peduncles on fish. Really? Yeah, I think it's 
I only just, associate it right feet. now with sea pens, but it shows what I know. I, I yeah. Oh, go oh. for it. Oh no, you got it. You okay? Oh, I was googling. Go for it. <laughs> oh, caudal peduncle. I think it's like the kind of the joint between like the caudal fin and the rest of the body. Is it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, at yeah. least for for fishies, yeah. So peduncle, and you're absolutely right. Um, peduncle for zoology by uh, the internet says that a stalk-like part by which an organ is attached to an animal's body or by which a barnacle or other sedentary animal is attached to a substrate, which is why we can have peduncles for these organisms that are attached to the substrate as well as a caudal peduncle, which is attaching the caudal fin to the rest of the fish. And it's used in botany too. Oh my gosh, wow. there are peduncles everywhere. <laughs> Peduncle. <Yeah. laughs> I love it. Comes from the modern Latin pedunculus, which I love. I'm going to use that to describe several of my friends. <laughs> <laughs> also, if we see one another, those gooseneck barnacles, um, can we get a close up of it? If we see another one? Sure. Are we cool. what? No, if we oh, no, no, no. Particles. In the future, in the future, yeah. Oh. Well, yeah, we'll keep an eye peeled. Actually, is that one right there? Ah. Speaking of which. <laughs> <laughs> Good spot. Good timing. <laughs> I think they heard us. <laughs> Absolutely did. Oh, it's got some wow. hydroids hanging out next to yeah. it, too. Guaranteed they're tuned into SPL. <laughs> oh, wow. Especially from 8 to 12. Oh, beautiful shot of the on branch bamboo, too. Kirkoyu, when the time is right, will you introduce yourself to the world? Oh, yes. Kalo mai. Ano e meke aloha kako o mo kukui no moio. Um, aloha, everybody. My name's Kukui. Um, I call Moi home. And I am one of the data loggers on board. And I'm so blessed to be able to be here with you all on board and on shore in this very special place in Papahano Mukuakia. Mahalo kukui. Mahalo back row. We have an idea of uh, yellow stolen octocorals. Oh, These are not yeah. hydroids. I was wrong. Oh. Great. These remind me of like a reptile claw. That is so cool. look like little lizards. Yeah. Little wall. That's amazing. These are great. Those little stolen ifrins are so friendly looking. You know? Mm hmm. Yeah. Kind of waving high. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Is this uh, just uh, rubble or are those batrioidal rocks? Uh, we're seeing a little bit of batrioidal texture in that recess yes. there, and it looks like it's a little bit thinner on the rock uh, that we we're just uh, zooming on. So we're, we're seeing probably some stuff that uh, sat around for a while and then broke up a little bit later, maybe. That's my guess. But yeah, good spot. <laughs> Got a whole room of geologists here. Just practicing. <laughs> the more the merrier. Dr. Val's not so secret mission to uh, convert Ooh, the world into that? geologists. So hey. Oh, it might just be a starfish. Geologists, biologists, water chemists, whatever we got here. You know, <clears throat> I, 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 I would love to have just more scientists in this world. The better we understand this world, the better we understand ourselves. Love that. Is that just a sponge stock and an old? Yeah, um, looks like we we've, we've seen several um, sponge stalks, dead sponges. Oh, we've got an anemone there too. Um, yeah, I should probably go back to the the log and see um, what the sponge ground from earlier was looking like.
Yeah, so cars are gorgeous and a shrimp as well in here. So is this shape from weathering or is this shape from like how this was formed? Um, <clears throat> it looks like at least part of this uh, has broken apart looking at uh, just the proximity of uh, stuff you know, the, the, the side of it looks like it's been truncated, like weathered or broken up a little bit, and then you've just got all this rubble here on the side. Mm -hmm. So there, there's definitely been a little dynamic uh, change with time. And it's, it's not too uncommon for uh, lava flows to uh, crumble if uh, th things get weak enough. So like if you're, if you're up in the park uh, uh, at Kilauea, uh, you can see a lot of intact lava flows, but you can also see where they've just kind of started to break apart, where things are fragile or maybe uh, the lava flow inflated, which is a different process than what we're likely to see here, but uh, mm. inflated and then, uh, you know, something drained out a little bit, sometimes that can collapse. Right. Actually, that can happen with underwater lava flows, too. Oh. I've seen that uh, a little bit at some of the seamounts out here. Uh, I've definitely seen it in uh, the Northeast Lava Basin with some of those young lavas. Sometimes you get lava tubes that break open and they, they're they still molten inside and that'll drain out and it just leaves the shell. So oh, sometimes wow. you can get processes like that that start breaking up the rock. We could zoom on this. I haven't seen that back path. He's there in a minute. Um, that's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it, it also means that you have to be really careful walking on lava fields and because you have to be careful not to break through. It's a good way to injure a foot. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I had a colleague that uh, broke a tarsal that way and had to be in a boot for a while. I... She was fine, but it, boots it was... Boots are no fun. Boots are no fun. Wow. Such a striking color. Yes, a lot of these... Um, black corals are actually really beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that is probably a bathopathies. Mm -hmm. Some might say all of them are really beautiful. Oh, um, <laughs> we if we see those yellow stoloniferans again, um, we have a proposal to collect. They might be pretty rare. It sounds like our biology team ashore hasn't, uh, is not, um, may not have seen it before, sorry. My words are oh. still coming online. <laughs> Great. So that might that might be a rare spot. So let's keep our eyes peeled. Being rare almost makes me glad that we didn't get it. I know. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's I, I, I. It's been, always the yeah. tension, right? It could be always a tricky collection tension. too. I I would imagine it would not be. Actually, I think the only way we could probably do it is if we collected a rock. Yeah. Okay, let's look out for a rock. <laughs> Thank God. There we go. Oh, God, Bell, well, I, 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 you know, That'd be a we, nice we, combo. Haven't, we haven't done a, a lot of bio collection on this uh, dive yet, so um, yeah, we can make that one a priority if we can uh, spot it again. That one's going to be tricky to spot because uh, it looks like a hydroid zoomed out, at least to my eye. <clears throat> look out for those gooseneck barnacles. I guess they tend to be around them or from the last spot yeah. that we saw. It's a good reference to start from, for sure. <laughs> yeah, Sako, find the rock. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time, like the last step that we collected a rock at? Good question. The depth was um, 1883. Okay, so not too long ago. Yeah, yeah we're at 1700 now. So yeah, we'll, we'll try to prioritize. Uh, yeah, some yellow stolons. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Some viewers tuning in, wondering, is there a volcano in the area? I would say you're looking at it. How would you How would you answer that question, Dr. Val? Pretty much like that. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, yes. we, we are on a volcano right now. Um, probably long extinct, uh, either wow. 25 to 30 million years extinct or somewhere in the neighborhood of 80 to 90 oh. million years. Wonderful. But ancient volcanoes are still volcanoes. Yep. 
the Olelo Hawaii word for volcano is actually Lua Pele. Oh. So, what, what was the first word? Pua? Lua? Lua. Yeah. Okay. L U A Pele. Awesome. So Thank that you. is the Hawaiian word for volcano, which is that you're seeing. Mahalo. Hawaiian word of the day. Ah, yep. Lua Pele. Wonderful. I like that. So oh, yeah, that is a Christ portrait. Question coming in for Virginia. We see bamboo corals. We see the uh, Venus, Venus flytrap anemone, oh, anemones. Um, oh, yeah. Viewers are wondering, I would guess that those land-based corallates received their name first. We first named bamboo, and then we found coral that resembled bamboo and called it bamboo coral. But does it sometimes go the other way, that ocean species are named first and then land-based species take on marine names um i you know i'm not sure yeah. i that is that is not my expertise the naming of species um what i what i do know is that um it has taken a long time for us to explore the deep sea to this yeah. to this depth um awesome thank you for that zoom and um and it can be very difficult that, then to to find that um, however, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, there are like coastal or like intertidal um, marine species that then give their names to similar looking you know, terrestrial creatures. species. But um, I want to find an example. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but fun question. Crazy question, as the as yeah. the viewer themselves put it. This may be a crazy question. We love those, the best kind. Yeah, absolutely. Keep Would it be calm. possible to get a look at this sponge as well? I don't know how we're. It looks like we're getting into an area with a little bit different um, diversity than what we were seeing. Polisoma, maybe. Oh, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I got in trouble last time for saying that without... Uh, yeah, we may want to get a zoom below that, too. That stock is beautiful, too. Yes. Yeah, and it is coming straight from below it. Yeah. So I don't think we can collect this rock, but those are either hydroids or it has those uh, octocorals. And we have right. something oh, right there, yeah, too. Oh, yeah, that does look like maybe there. there. Well, that might actually be collectible, but like, it's in between a bunch yeah, of stuff, which makes that tough. less difficult. Yeah, that could be a Bolosoma species. Oh, well, we've got more of those cup corals as well. Yeah. Those cup corals look very similar to one that we got on your, one of your rocks uh, yeah. yesterday. Or, yeah, that would have been yesterday morning. The last dive. I still haven't been down there to really work on this yet. <laughs> that will be this afternoon. Awesome. Thank you for that. Okay, looking for some stolons. Yeah. Would it be uh, The stolons, hmm, I'm mm -hmm. not sure. They look like they're kind of firmly rooted. Uh, you'd have to be able to sort of, um, I think potentially, but not if you want to keep them intact. Yeah, yeah which sense. would be unfortunate. Mm That's a cool view in Atalanta, too. Oh, yeah, that is. You can see all the different. Um, I think a lot of these are that primnoid that uh, uh, Asako, as well as Sebastian, said were Peristinella. Um, as well as there's a. Yeah. That's great. Wow, look at all the squat lobsters. Oh my goodness. That's pretty astonishing. 
all these different organisms. Oh, and it looks like there's a, a fish. Yeah, yeah, center screen there. That's pretty cool. Wow, and look at all these corals up here on the left. Those are massive too. That's pretty, it's pretty astonishing to see some of the size that these are getting because, um, you know, a lot of these corals are s pretty slow growers. Wow, this place is hopping. You can see there's been some, there's some varied, varied topography. Um, and we're, at, we're able to see some of the marine snow falling. These crinoids are stunning too. Oh, yeah, oh and there are, it looks like there's some parazoanthids on the pernoid. Oh yeah. Wow. It's like fireworks over here with the crinoids. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, and a squat lobster? A couple of them. Those look like the Anamurin squat lobsters. Along with the crinoid and the parazoanthids. Those are beautiful. Looks like some hydroids coating that as well. Oh, and you can see the little isopods swimming around. Yeah, and I can actually see evidence in the manganese crusts of some current polishing here. So there is a long-term oh, current. Beautiful. That's fantastic. Thank you. We have uh, Science Ashore, Tina and Asaka are both saying, so uh -huh. the uh, association and also hydroids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think that there's a chance that these primnodes are slightly different than what we were seeing previously, too. Oh, well, we've, looks like we've got one of those sparsely branched bamboos down there as well. Another stocked sponge. Are we I getting into Bolosoma territory? I think that was Bolosoma before. It had the sort of... I think so. We saw a bunch of those last year, mm -hmm. both the yellow and the white ones. Nice, nice. Yeah, would it be possible to get a zoom on, on that? Uh, bamboo? This is pretty, it's really cool to see that the, the difference in where these corals are um, set of like where they are thriving as well, right? So whether mm -hmm. they're on sort of the, the hard pan oh, substrate. Oh, I think that's or, one of the yellow sponges. Oh, nice. I don't know why, I just I just love the yellow sponges. Hey, that's They're fantastic. Just so striking. Oh yeah, that is a beautiful bamboo. Alright, it looks like it is Inter mm. Internal? Looks like it's on the node to me. Yeah, actually, that could be, it could be a node there. Okay. Nodal branching. Cool. Thank you. That's excellent. Thank you for that. Wait, um, wait, where's, where's our collection list? Uh, I don't think we have... What about it? That's the yellow sponge. Is that one yellow? <laughs> I think so. We can turn yeah. this. Yeah, no. let's get some not red light on this. <laughs> I think 
It's hard because you can only see the back of it on this list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the it back is completely the same. flat. Yeah, it's not the same not thing. Bulbous. Okay, but thank you. Hey, had to check. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That is interesting. I wonder how it got so yellow. Don't Are know. they oh, always yellow? too. Oh. Oh, wonderful. Oh, I wonder if that's one of my favorite Sinaphobranca eels. Oh. I was going to say snailfish when you said favorite. Uh, I mean, those are <laughs> probably my absolute favorite. Oh, okay. yeah. But Puhi? Asaka was telling us last night that it was her cruise. Ooh. Where, uh, yeah. They sent oh, yeah. Yep. observation. Yeah, that's, that's the... Um, that's a very wow. common response for the Sinefa Brinkids. That was great. Oh, interesting. It looks like there's something on top of this bunch as well. Yep. Yellow bol bolosoma. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I've, been, I've been waiting all expedition to see one of these. Have you really? I don't think I've ever seen one. They're pretty cool. They almost have like a face to them. Wow. I did not know that they would get that vibrant yellow. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, it's it's surprising as those neon yellow corals. Oh, that's fantastic. Right, we've got a whole bunch of cup corals over here. Could we do could we do a quick flyby zoom on those? Um, see if we see any of those octocorals. Seems like the bamboos have come back for us all of a sudden. Where are we looking? Um, right around here with the uh, cup corals. Just want to see if we can see any of those uh, 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 st uh, stolen um, corals. I don't think it's a firm association. We're just kind of going off of old field clues. <laughs> hey, There. there was something below, though. I think um, to the right, maybe. Oh, that's a nice shot. Yeah, could we pan a little bit right? Thank you. Yeah, what, what's right there? That's That looks different, though. It's like a, the white stolen difference? Yeah, Maybe. could be. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, that looks like a different species. Oh yeah, yeah that yeah that does look like some white solaniferans. That's okay. interesting. But they are they do seem to be on the un oopsies not what um, um draw yeah, got it. Go. Um, they do seem to be on the underside of this and and here um, all on the undersides of these rocks, not. You know, yeah. not completely exposed to the stronger currents, maybe. Yeah. But also, right next to where the cup corals are growing. They could have a similar niche. Maybe. It's interesting. All right, thanks for the Good zoom. Idea. Yeah, yeah that you. was fantastic. Looks like we've got a Chrysoporcia underneath some of those as well. And is that a paracliptop? Clicot. I think so, I think it um, another primnoid definitely. I think they were saying that the these larger ones might have been a paracletophora. The one on the yeah. left is definitely a different. Um, I can look that one up. That's got a different branching style.
Yeah, the one on the left, I think, was maybe a Caliptophora? Caliptrophora? This is looking like a hyaloclastite deposit here. Oh, you really? You can actually see a little little bit of jointing in it. Oh, so not quite oh. yellow brick road, but uh, very fascinating. Looks like uh, perhaps a similar sort of thing. Could you repeat that one more time? What we're seeing, Dr. Val? What was that? Uh, looks like hyaloclastite. Hyaloclastite. Some of that, some of that near vent deposit. And Internet. I think we repeat after Dr. Val. <laughs> hyaloclastite. And I think we are seeing some field evidence for uh, some lava having uh, overtopped some of this too. So I think we're looking at another uh, baked crust. Yeah. Baked awesome. margin. Oh. Could be lost cities nearby. <laughs> Get the lost going. coral cities. Can you explain to anyone who might not have overheard us talk about this last night what um, this uh, what uh, helioclastite is? Sure. Yeah, helioclastites are a volcano sedimentary rocks, so both volcanic and sedimentary in origin, that uh, were most likely erupted out of a vent somewhere nearby. So there's there's a volcanic vent somewhere around here. Probably we can't find it because uh, uh, this this is uh, this landscape has changed a lot since uh, it was emplaced. But uh, these, uh, it's probably basaltic lava originally that was erupted energetically into the water column, torn apart and fragmented and cooled. And then it kind of rains out of the water column and forms these, uh, these deposits. And because you have uh, pieces with a really high surface area to volume ratio and it's a rather porous deposit, you get um, seawater that gets into this really easily. And you know, if there's an active hydrothermal system in the area, uh, so if the volcano is still hot, there's probably some of that activity happening too. And that goes and it rapidly alters the rock to this kind of uh, pale yellow color. And uh, it's, it's very soft, it's very easy to cut through. Um, we, we bring these up occasionally in uh, dredges and uh, with the ROV sometimes. Um, and yeah, it's, a, it, it's just a really energetic near vent deposit um, that, that shows up every now and again on these volcanoes. Would so. it be possible to get a quick zoom on this coral here? while we're here. Can you zoom in? It looks slightly different than some of the other black corals that we've seen today. I think this one looks a little bit more like a yellow brick patio than a yellow brick road. <laughs> I did Hawaii, hey, we call down. patio lanai. Yes. <laughs> Actually the- I um, love the a good lanai to sit on. Black coral. <laughs> yeah, uh, this one here. Oh yeah, awesome. it's got a nice piece of lava it's sitting on. Oh, that might be similar to what we've been seeing. Oh, and it's got a, um, nope, it's not sitting on the rock. Zoom in. Oh, that's beautiful. What's that sitting next to it? Something small. Yeah. <laughs> Yellowish. There's a cup coral. That could be another, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not positive on that ID of that one. This one, um, that one looks interesting because it's got similar branching, but more very, it's, um, it's a, it's a thicker branching than just the bathopathies, which we see so commonly and are so very symmetrical. Um, and it's got its own little squat lobster. Mm -hmm. Just fantastic. I don't think we always see a squat lobster with the black corals. So that's pretty cool. Awesome. Thank you for that zoom. Mm -hmm. Front row, the eight to twelve, uh, eight to twelve fans around the world. Would love to be reintroduced to you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, my name is. Catalina. Oh, good. I'm serving here as a navigator for the ROV team, and I'm a master's student from at USF's College of Marine Science in St. Petersburg, Florida. Uh, I'm Robert Waters, uh, ancient ROV pilot. <laughs> <laughs> Also trickster and cookie lover. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Zach Gonzalez. I'm a younger um, pilot, co-pilot, helping Robert. And uh, I think there's 
a over like a hangover right in front of you. Like all like in Atlanta. Oh yeah. Yeah, you're about to run into it in a second. But anyways, uh, I've been doing ROV for a few years. Uh, happy to be here on the all of us, uh, helping out and looking. Yep, Ooh. there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm enjoying my time out here, and it's really amazing seeing everything and uh, observing everything with the team. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Zach. I was wondering what that was because it looked oh, like a circle for a second. Oh, wow. I couldn't tell what it was. That's amazing. And, uh, Zach, can you move your mic up just a bit? Is that better? Yeah, thank you. Okay. And I'm Amber Flynn, your video engineer. Uh, coming here from Los Angeles, originally from Seattle. Um, yeah, great to be here. Uh, thank you, Front Row. So much of the incredible gift of exploration that we've experienced over the past two weeks has been brought to us by these amazing four humans yeah. sitting in the front of the control van. Thank you all. Looks like there's some large ones on the left as well. Yeah, the Analana view is amazing. What's on that bamboo stock? Sorry? There's like these circular things on that. Um, oh, it's a stock. I think it's another stock sponge. Yeah. So just a heads up real quick here, as we, we're basically on waypoint six right now, and as we make our way to waypoint seven, we're gonna cross over a little uh, saddle spot there. So we're gonna go down and then back up, uh, just in case you wanted to look for anything in there. Oh yeah, it looks like we've got that bath of pathies in the background of this too. Can we get a close up of that sponge if we can? Very unique Hu'akai sponge. Mm -hmm. Hu'a, Hu'akai. Mm -hmm. Oh, sort Hololeo. of like Hu'akai, yeah. but Hu'akai. Hu'akai. Oki number two in the UNEA. Yeah. Awesome. Hu'a. Are all sponges Hu'akai? Um. All sponges? Yeah, for I guess the general, um, we don't really have specifics on sponges and for Olal Hawaii quite yet. But not just glass sponges, all maybe all kinds of sponges. Mm -hmm. I know I don't expect anyone to notice, but just more uh, naming opportunities for our kiki, all the different we beautiful the forms. Yeah. yeah, we are. So um, we're gonna head due north. There's a quick drop off here to the left. So. Oh wow. So Osako is saying that that one is a branching called Fakus, a new genus in the animal guide. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Mahalo nui Osako. Branching called Fakus, wow. Mahalo Osako. Yeah, thank you so much. So many beautiful glass sponges of so many different varieties, mm -hmm. different architectures. These oh glass yeah. sponges are some of the most amazing architects on the planet. They really are. And they've been designing for hundreds of years. This Walterio sponge is looking pretty amazing with its, uh, <laughs> well, its hydroid, associates. Uh, yeah, all of its associates, the crinoids and Ophiroids, it's got a, looks like another squat lobster and... Wow. This is <laughs> Wal Walteria? This is this? That's, that's my, um, educated guess. 
Yes. They're gorgeous. They are gorgeous. And then what is uh, Virginia, um, the associates, the, that yellow green associate are you, are you talking about this one? Or the coral? Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking that's got to be a hydroid because it has been able to colonize the sponge. Um, uh, let me see, but it's, and it looks very diff delicate with some of the um, uh, branching styles that we've seen earlier. Is this full zoom for this? Which is totally great if it is. It is, yeah. Great. Oh, we've got more barnacles there too. Um, yeah, there's several hydroids that look very similar to um, um, to corals. Um, it's really beautiful how they can, um, yeah, how they can just kind of join on top of a, a sponge or some of these other, you know, the associations of corals and um, sea stars, crinoids, hydroids. It's um, it's amazing how how large that community can be. Oh, another cup coral. Go ahead. Wonderful. So a question Whoa. that came in on a uh, direct large. line to me from my grandmother oh, is, wonderful. Uh, yes, how do squat lobsters get their names? <laughs> <laughs> like the squat part? Yeah. Um, I would assume it's because lobsters. Um, they're kind of like squatting on their tails, unlike unlike the lobsters, uh, the shallow shallow lobsters, which their tails are all the way out. Yes, yeah, so they're kind of like is, tucked underneath. This is a complete assumption based on their. Um, I can do a, a quick Google to like, to verify the etymology. Yeah, of it makes sense from a morphological um, standpoint. Um, squat lobster. But yeah, she she can't quite see the details, mm -hmm. so. Uh, Yeah, permanently tucked beneath their yes. body. So okay. they're, yeah, they're the tail of the squat lobster, um, which does resemble the tail of a red lobster or, or um, you know, any, there's there's several s species of shallow lobsters. Um, but the tail of the squat lobster is tucked beneath their body, and so they are squat. Yes. Awesome. Mm. I do like when my complete guess is correct. <laughs> <laughs> It, it makes a lot of sense when you uh, just based on the morphology of them, though. So yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're squatting. Look and at this squat. There's this little terrier oh, just they're... being home to everything. Oh yeah, and that little uh, that ophiroid just they can they can actually swim. It's pretty impressive. Oh look at it yeah. go. Yeah, it's just like oh, I see you. Yeah. I'm out. Oh, and we've got a brazingit here. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That's another type of uh, a kind of derm. Um, I think they're, yeah. Um, can you zoom in? Yeah, they can get pretty large. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like there's a small Chrysogorgia just below it. Oh, there is, yeah. Oh, that's excellent. Oh, interesting. I thought the one of its arms was like tucked behind it, but no, it looks like it's one of its arms has been shortened. Hmm. Stunning. Thank you for the zoom. Oh, I missed a branch in Calophagus. That's mm. it was pretty cool. That does sound pretty cool. Still lots of cup corals. I'd like to say holy la hanau to uh, to my son Koa, oh, turning nine years yeah. old today. Oh, and uh, so, son, I I got you the deep ocean volcano for your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, dude. How only Lohano. How only Happy birthday to Koa. And in no time he'll be on expeditions, voyages, 
You'll Watch be out. you'll be at port seeing him off <laughs> and dropping him off at the airports and making sure he has his toothbrush yep. <laughs> and everything headlamp important. It won't be long. Yeah. He's, he's ready. Yeah. Teaching all of us about the stars, yeah. how to navigate. Yeah. He's a wonderful teacher. He's a great learner and a wonderful teacher. I'm thankful. Thankful he's in my life and our family's lives. Koa, I love you, buddy. Miss you. Sako says happy birthday, too. Oh, oh that's lovely. Scientists around the world cheering you on. Yeah. Son, you're a lucky kid. <laughs> We're, we're heading down slope basically up this direction. For those who get a little hungry when they see our squat lobster friends, uh, a viewer online sharing that uh, you can order. You can order online. They're in stock <laughs> and uh, apparently what? quite popular in Scotland. Squat lobsters? Yeah. Yes. What? Wow. How do they, how are they sustainably fishing for a squat lobster? Well, sustainably, you know, always the question. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, because we typically don't see very dense communities around these uh, uh, inactive, you know, volcanically inactive habitats. The only place I've, so far, you know, Big caveat there. Uh, seeing dense uh, communities of squat lobsters has been at hydrothermal vents. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like there is there are some fisheries for squat lobsters. One is on the coast of Chile and uses demersal trawls to catch. Oh, oh what is, oh, is, that, oh, that, is that, that a squid? Is that a squid? squid. Hey, oh, that's oh, amazing. Oh, and it's a cool. beautiful squid. Oh it gosh. is. Oh, we believe wow. it is a Kinolawa form of manifestation of Kanaloa, our ocean deity. Oh, amazing. Cool. A very important one. One of yeah. the preferred Kinolawa of Kanaloa. Slippery, slippery wow. Kanaloa. Wow. It likes the light. Wow, fascinating. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. For being a deep sea voyager with us. Oh. Oh, then we have another. There's a fight for fame. Who's going to get the spot on camera? You got to wait. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what that was that I just saw in Atlanta cam, but I saw that too. Okay. <laughs> hmm? There was something that came up in the Atlanta cam for a second. Oh. It was very round. I saw an octopus. That. I don't think it was an octopus. <laughs> <laughs> we did miss octopuses last time out. There was a whole there was like two of them floating around. I guess. Or, I think the oh, that last one. Last one seemed out. Yeah, last seemed out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. these are four. That same watch that four of them. Uh, wow. I remember I showed you, it was like in the very far distance. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, we can't see it. <laughs> hey, that counts. <laughs> yeah, I think everyone was talking. I was trying to point it out to Amber, but I was trying to get her to zoom in real quick, and he was already gone by the time she did. Uh, yeah, bird. sometimes they move really fast. Mm -hmm. Is that a jellyfish? I don't know.
you're just joining us on YouTube or on Nautilus Live, we're happy you're here. The Seamount, unnamed Seamount 11 wasn't mapped until yesterday. Um, our mapping team made a, a couple passes over over the Seamount. Team put together a dive plan and here we are. Ola i ke ao a Kanaloa, life to the realm of Kanaloa. And you know, Dan, as you mentioned your son's birthday today and how he is a teacher and a student in your life, I think we all have that within us. And then we also don't realize sometimes that children, our keiki, are our greatest teachers too. Yeah. Their inquisitiveness to view the world and nature, um, to just be in pure awe of it and to freely, openly, and vulnerably ask questions about it is inspiring. Yeah, deeply inspiring. I've, I've been a teacher for a long time but and, and worked in several schools, various places around the world, and I still contend that a lot of our so-called education is miseducation. Um, our, our children are uh, <clears throat> often uh, ready and capable to take themselves on the paths that they need to go down. and. Yeah. Sometimes we get in the way. Mm -hmm. Try to do that a little less. Yeah, no argument your, there. <laughs> what was your journey to becoming an educator? Oh boy. It's a bit of a story. Don't know if SPL is ready for it. <laughs> oh, I, I started out. Uh, I studied neuroscience, cognitive psychology, it was my undergraduate program in Tennessee, a long way from the ocean and a long way from home. And then somehow uh, got invited to come work as a wilderness guide for young at-risk youth in the southeastern United States, in the Gulf Coast of Florida, the swamps of Florida. And I couldn't believe some of the stories I was hearing from from those youth about what their experiences in school were like, quite different from my own. And uh, I went to go see for myself. So I, I didn't believe the kids. It turned out pretty much everything they told me was true and uh, a little bit frustrating. And so I, my journey as a teacher and educator uh, began trying to figure out that puzzle and that how we might uh, give young people the set them on the paths that they really deserve. It's incredible how beautiful humans are. So smart. And, uh, sometimes we get in our own way or aspects of life get in our way. You know, we're, we're so naturally inquisitive at that age too, just natural scientists. And and so, science is innate. Mm -hmm. Learning is innate. Our, our uh, incredible brains have evolved to do it. and. Uh, it's just unfortunately, as you were saying, yeah, sometimes we get in the way of that as teachers and uh, we don't necessarily cultivate or nourish that uh, that wonder appropriately. You know, it's almost it can be lost. Yeah, it's almost always the case in my experience. Teachers are, are incredible human beings themselves, um, often such powerful learners. And we've just designed or been placed into a educational system that doesn't always fully value and respect exactly uh, just how amazing humans are and the teachers and capacity. the students <laughs> absolutely yeah. 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 yeah yeah i would love to see some changes to the system <laughs> Ew. Ew. Speaking of changes of the system, <laughs> we're, uh, we're watching the amazing Zach Gonzalez jump into yes. the Herc pilot seat. I, is it, this is pretty exciting. Ooh, Zach. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Go, Zach. More than, more than capable. Give Robert a little, a little uh, quick break. Awesome. Who, who knows? Right, Tom Brady, he came off the bench, right? <laughs> got, got, just one injury is all it takes, Zach. One injury away from stardom. <laughs> 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 
Okay. <laughs> sorry, Robert. Sorry. Robert. Robert's okay. not injured. Robert, for the record. Robert, He's looking Robert. for cookies right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little early for cookies, but it is Saturday. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Jorge, our, our dear friend downstairs, he was telling us uh, to take sugar cookies off the breakfast buffet line. So mm -hmm. I, I took I took Pro a cookie. Tip. Yeah. <laughs> he, tip. You know, I was like, no, it's okay. He's like, why? We always these ones are always left over. And I was like, I guess so. I mean, you give us cinnamon rolls, donuts, so. croissants, <laughs> crepes. Like, yeah, I guess the cookie is gonna get left behind in the know. mix of all of the wonderful things. You know, eggs three different ways. I like, know, right? Right. right. Oh, that toast that they do with the, the other fried oh, egg and the cheese. Yeah. Yeah. We have really on a delicious toast with yeah, mm -hmm. a roasted tomato on it, bell pepper. Don't give away all our yeah, secrets. Ship life is life. rough. This is really <laughs> hard, everybody. <laughs> Please uh, oh, send us no, your all yeah. of your well wishes. And it's so great to have a breakfast to look forward to. <laughs> it is, yeah, it is. You know, it's actually one of the reasons I get out of bed so quickly in the morning, aside from making sure that, you know, everyone Mahina else has eaten all the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> everyone I share a bathroom with can have access to the bathroom, but it's, you know, it's like, okay, no, I actually do need time to eat my breakfast and yeah. taste it instead of just, you know. Scoop and slurp. Food. Yeah. Scoop. I mean, I would have said throwing food into my mouth, but that's... Scoop and slurp. Food plays into a big piece of, you know, crew and team morale out here. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're so fortunate. You know, we even saw our wonderful ROV pilot go in for an Oreo cookie <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> go in for some Oreo cookies, so... Uh, it does. Meal times. <laughs> yeah, I did. Oh, meal time is yeah one of my favorite times on on board the ship. Get to see some of our friends from other watches, hang out and catch up. Uh, yeah, that's where the whole crew gets yeah. to come together for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it's really nice. They feed us very well. We are well taken care of. Looking at that thing at the bottom of the screen too. Yeah, I think it's a tube anemone. Yeah, we've seen. We're getting into sort of a, a region where there's small enough pebbles or sediment that they we could get some tube anemones. Also, it looks like we've got some different corals here. Oh, that might be. A, yeah. Yeah, I'm it's some sure sort of coral. I'm not sure what that one is. Could be. I stopped, but I can't tell where I'm at with that one. So you should be positive. good, actually. Atalanta is stopping now with the ship. Oh, yeah, I didn't realize. I didn't think about okay. that. Yeah, I'm we keeping an eye, too. Okay. We don't have an Atalanta. Yeah. yeah. So I'm trying to, like, keep on it and keep on it. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. <laughs> no, yeah, you're you're doing two people's jobs right now. You're in charge, too. You're, you're, you're Hercules. Go, Zach! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean... I was going to say, I think Atalanta is in a safe enough spot, and we're stopped here if you wanted to try to get a zoom or stop and set down or any of that. Okay. Oh. Thank no. Robert. Robert's back. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, stop the shenanigans. <laughs> Ooh. Dr. Val, um, Forgive me in advance, but I was trying to explain what we were seeing on one of our watches. And on the right-hand side, you, I explained like the smaller rocks as um, garden cinder gravel. But what is what would be like the proper term for that? Because <laughs> I was talking to one of our friends downstairs, our other crew. Crew was like, "Oh, what, how was the terrain?" And I was like, "Do you know garden cinder?" Oh, like yeah, yeah. the bags of garden cinder. <laughs> it's like we saw a lot of that in some boulders, <laughs> but like smaller. Uh, I would call that tallest stuff that's been breaking off tallest. of uh, some of the lava flows and okay. kind of moving into uh, lower spots, to uh, bathymetrically lower spots. Oh, wonderful tallest. Okay, thank you so much. No worries. Sometimes also affectionately referred to as debris. Okay. 
Catalina is uh, taking us uh, out over a, a small saddle uh, between kind of two sub peaks, two summits at waypoint six, waypoint six and seven. Oh yeah, tallest is definitely a biological term too, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. I know. I just tried to do a Google on quick facts, and it gave me like a bone of a foot, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, I saw mm, not not gonna get much information on. Ooh, I think there's another yeah. tube anemone there, or maybe the same one. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah. We've got a couple of glass bunches all the way down too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're saying a lot of these, the pebble, sort of broken up. That's what we're describing as talus. Um. Well, to be honest, I was thinking about some of the larger uh, pieces, but um, oh, yeah, okay. that that would be. Uh, in the, in the same general category, okay. so kind of kind of rubble. Yeah, yeah. I would imagine that the the very small puddles that we're seeing here are probably pretty hard to describe. Yeah, they can in, come from anywhere. In sedimentary parlance, this area has a very poorly sorted uh, grain size because you're seeing everything <laughs> from like fine silt to uh, boulder size. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Try not to hit this other coral right here. <laughs> Any catch up? Yeah, you can um, zoom up ahead a little bit. Okay. Awesome to see the master come back in the room and uh, and keep the young one, the young Jedi, Zach. <laughs> the Padawan. In the, the Padawan. In the, Padawan. Yes. <laughs> in, the uh, in the pilot seat. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Although, Zach, it's my understanding that um, you have so, uh, like years of experience working with ROVs, right? Yeah, so this is a different system, so I'm not completely used to it yet, and it's always kind of nerve-wracking to go to someone else's system that mm. I'm not used to, so. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. doing a great job. Awesome. Good job. Awesome. I think once or twice in the last half hour or so, I've seen a couple of rocks that are a little lighter colored and seemingly out of place. And I'm wondering if we're seeing a few more of those uh, uh, travelers, like Ooh, pieces of a pumice raft again. Oh. oh yeah, I saw one of the light gray yeah. rocks. Yeah, like most likely that's what there. those are. Our voyaging pohaku, I like that. Those yeah. Are really cool. For those who are uh, just just tuning in or who maybe didn't hear those earlier conversations some sometimes the stones this form of stone released from volcanic activity pumice a lot of air trapped inside is that right and mm -hmm. uh, and will actually float various across gases. the ocean yeah. yeah various gases trapped inside and and, um, and so it'll float sometimes long distances sometimes in you know, large large rafts and as that breaks apart and, and slowly takes on more water and those bubbles get filled it sinks down so it could come from long distance away volcanic yeah. activity a long distance away i think maybe as far away as the aleutians or the marianas wow. that's awesome wow yeah, those, those are far those are quite yeah. far yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah i've, I've uh, mentioned it before on watch but uh we would see these uh, in 2013, sometimes in uh, in our uh, dredges, uh, deep, deep on the, the Tuvalu Seamounts, a little bit north of uh, uh, Samoa. Uh, yeah, you'd bring up these big pumices, and we figured that they probably came from the Tongan Arc, which is a little bit closer to uh, that area, but very similar sort of rafting and uh, uh, eventual foundering process. Very active, uh, right, currently, that Tonga Arc. Yeah, that's where the uh, major eruption just last infamous year. Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai eruption occurred. Yeah. That may have uh, and scientists are now thinking it may have uh, very temporarily uh, altered some of the uh, weather patterns globally. It's just because oh, of the wow, amount of wow. ash that was put into the yeah part of particulates that were put up. Gases, like gun, water vapor. In front of us. Wow, just the sheer that's force of that eruption. Dude. Oh, well, this is interesting. These sponges, it's, um, it almost looks like it's getting some sedimentation on it. 
Is that sedimentation or is that um, partially dead? Not sure. Um, I'm also wondering if it only gets sedimentation on it when it starts to die. Because there's uh, a dead one there. Yeah. Um, like it's but not also, filtering anymore. It's just yeah, like yeah. So the other thing too is that like this one has a lot of sediment on it, but parts of it are still white. So I'd say that that sponge is still alive. It's just got sediment on it, hmm. or at least part of it. So um, I uh, I don't know at what point a sponge is dead. Um, but then also, like these sponges probably are still hosting, whether they're alive or dead, are host to an unbelievable culture of bacteria that can be really important for um, uh, recycling of nutrients in the area. So, um, it's still a very important portion part of this community of the the assemblages on these seamounts. Yeah, looks like we've got another small sponge over here too. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Now, sponges are clonal organisms, right? And oh, are, that too, Minami. is each sponge an individual organism, or are they more like corals, where you know we have individual polyps making up a larger collection? I don't know. I don't know um, how sponges work. Yeah, no. So I believe sponges are a single organism, just made up of like many different cells. I'm Googling to make sure that I am correct on that because I know we learned that they have different types of cells um, and they have cells that move water through through them. Um, uh, but yeah, no, I don't think they're like multi, unlike, unlike polyps, I don't believe, like unlike each sponge, uh, sorry, each coral has many polyps that are kind of individual. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't know that the sponges are the same. And if you broke off a piece of sponge and separated from the main body, that, that broken off bit would, would die pretty quickly? No, you can put a sponge in a blender and end up with a whole bunch of sponges. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I yeah. think it's because <laughs> they... <laughs> it sounds like something Robert would have found they're out. They're one of those things that their, their cells are, what is it? It's like pluripotent. They can be anything. Okay. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Simple colonial animals. Oh, they are colonial. Yeah. New SpongeBob was so amazing. <laughs> yeah. I did SpongeBob. <laughs> I got in big trouble because they said SpongeBob was dead. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Robert. The internet <laughs> would not. I meant that the show wasn't on anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they make a new episode. <laughs> Yeah. The, yeah, internet, the internet will not, is not a good thing to say. Uh, <laughs> the internet will not accept that for sure. Wait, are they still making episodes? Oh, it looks like you have uh, What's that? you might are need to pause that other page. No, I think yeah, I think they stopped. <laughs> yeah, you got that's going. Thanks, Dr. Vaughn. Yeah, no worries. Good spot. Interesting. We need every bit of bandwidth we can get mm -hmm. on board. Oh, what's this orange thing? That's what I was going towards right now, actually. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I've seen a couple of those throughout the dive, too. I wasn't that sure. Yeah. Yeah, could, would it be possible to get a zoom on that? Oh, that's spectacular. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's looking like a, a type of schizopathid uh, black coral. That's excellent. Oh, 
that's wonderful. Thank you for that zoom. Mm -hmm. That's a cool little fish. Right in the middle. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Remember, can we zoom? Good spot, Catalina. Right next to the lasers. What oh, cute little buddy. That's cool. Oh. It's a little grenadier. Bye, buddy. So cute. Just about a thousand feet below the summit of Seamount 11, and uh, making our way up this up this ridge line. Yep, we're uh, moving very gradually downhill into a uh, saddle point between uh, waypoints six and seven. Making pretty good progress on this dive. That is a really steep drop off down to the left. Yeah, it is. Oh, wow, look at those corals, though. It's gorgeous. I'm going to go ahead and give us a short nudge forward. Okay. This is some pretty wild morphology we're looking at. Wow, look at all I those corals. I think we are back into Hyalo Clasta. It's looking at the, uh, looking at oh, the edges that what of that these. Is? Yeah. Oh, I was wondering if it was colonized by something. I think, I, I think that's the rock. Multiple layers. Thank you to all the deep sea travelers out there joining us on Ala El Moana Kaiuli Expedition, dive number seven on unnamed seamount, number 11. Just mapped by our mapping team yesterday en route. And uh, put this really cool dive plan together. It was, it was great coming down last night and I'm glad to see beautiful sort of new New kind of corals and sponges, a little bit different geological formations as, as we make our way up this ridge, drop, as Dr. Val was just saying, into this little saddle, almost to the low point. We got Zach Gonzalez. How's it going, Zach? Good. In the Herc chair. Where are you taking us, Catalina? So basically, directly due north is going to take us okay. down into that saddle point. Okay. What's that large coral colony to the left of that peristanella? 
Oh. Yeah, that one, one, it looks different. It's a slightly different color. It's gray. It could still be a pinguin, but it might also be... Um, Which one? Uh, the one right below your lasers right here. Okay. It'd be great if we could get a zoom in on that one. Good eye. Thank you, Kukui. friend down here too. Hi friend. Mm. What was mm. your what was what's the name for eel again? Puhi. Puhi. Yes. I think that could be another a puhi. Yeah, it's got the very triangular fins that I recognize with um oh, <laughs> Frankie eels and that little tail. Nice. Mm-hmm. Bye, Poohy. Oh, we got a oh, shrimp joining us. Well, this, this coral looks interesting. It's kind of fuzzier looking. Yeah. Would it be possible to zoom in on that? Amber, can you zoom? The branching kind of reminds me of a black coral almost. Yeah. I can see the skeleton though. Yeah, actually. That's what I was I think thinking that is too, a black and coral. that fuzziness. You can, you can see a black skeleton yeah. up here, down here. That's amazing. Is that, this, one, that is huge. Is this full zoom? Yeah, yeah that's full zoom. Excellent. Thank Look you for that. Look at how tiny the polyps are. Right. Well, and that's these pops. Um, uh, Tina's asking for approximate size. Yeah, it's got to be I, like a meter, right? I, I won't. I won't. I didn't check the size before um, on the with the lasers beforehand, but um, we can do that when we zoom out. I mean, this is enormous. It's beautiful. It's got a squat lobster in it. Awesome. Could wow. we Could we zoom out a little bit to get a better size approximation? All right, so we've got the lasers on it, and there's several lasers for, between the size. Uh, yes. Ring one, exactly. About on the order of a meter. Yeah. And maybe taller. At least across. Okay. Let me get closer to it then. Amazing. Wow. Our goals today on this dive, starting last night and today, I'd try to find out is this uh, part of created from the Hawaiian hotspot or oh, Cretaceous in origin. I think we're probably still leaning towards yeah. Cretaceous in origin. To push back in a bit. At the moment, yeah. yeah. Okay. Collecting some uh, pohaku, awesome. some rock samples along the way. Yeah. Dr. Val and other geologists can... Oh, that's There's beautiful. There's a bead of something that just moved out of screen. Oh. Is this good for the measurement, or do you want it closer, farther? What's oh, no, that's perfect for the measurement. And I think we've got, um, we have, uh, Tina says it might be a trisopathies, or it is a tr trisopathies. So, that's awesome. Okay. Going full wide? Great, thank you. You also that you saw some movement in the corner? Yeah, there's a string of uh, sort of red beads that looked like maybe some eggs or something that moved out of screen about a minute ago. That's interesting. I thought it might be some kind of uh, jelly or tunicate or something. I'm oh yeah, sure. it could have been could have been a, uh, related to a jelly too. Wasn't really sure what it is. I just caught, I just barely caught it moving out of screen. Great. course we're also always interested in the benthic biological communities what's living down here trying to characterize all these amazing corals and sponges and, and many many other creatures that uh, 
our Head associates. Back into a bunch of cup corals again. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Maybe a sea star there. Oh yeah, a little sea star. We got some more of that um, sponge. That's that frayed sponge that's got some brown on it. And I think these are still a mix of pinoids and bamboos here. I'm a big fan on that outcrop coming yeah, up. Yeah, I was looking <laughs> at that too. This is some very dynamic bathymetry here. Right. Yeah, you know, it doesn't look that sharp of a, a um, saddle on I the... I doubt the multi-beam can pick up uh, detail this fine. So this is this is probably a highly localized feature that just doesn't show up with the resolution we can get from the surface. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it depends on uh, a lot of different. The mapping depends on a lot of different things. I know some yeah. some can get maps that are ten meters, um, but that's still probably um, larger than larger than this. That is cool. That is great to see. Can I steal this? Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Dr. Val, if we were to if we were to touch these rocks, you know, lava rocks. Well, I know from surfing on shallow lava reefs and also hiking on the on the lava um, fields in Hawaii, incredibly sharp. You know, if you were to fall on that, it uh, will will cut you quite easily. Um, would we expect that this would have sort of that same texture and characteristic? And when you bring them up, when you bring them up, are they are they rough like that? They feel like lava rock. Uh oh yeah. Yeah, there, there are definitely some edges on some of these rocks. Um, yeah, sometimes just to be on the safe side while handling uh, uh, cert certain ones, uh, I'll, I'll use like work gloves. Or some thick gloves, yeah. Yeah, it also helps uh, keep the manganese crusts uh, from getting uh, <laughs> too much you, on everything. Keeps you from getting uh, manganese crusted and crusted. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's not really gonna do anything just on my skin and all I got to do is just scrub up when I'm done yeah but uh, and it, long term you don't want to like ingest anything like that uh, because there are heavy metals in those uh, manganese crusts and uh, you know over time our bodies don't do so well with the background of those built up not so sure. um, but yeah um, there, there are some instances where uh, yeah these these rocks can uh, cut you up if you're not careful here, they're a little bit less likely to, for the most part. Yeah, um, kind of far away. Yeah, I'm about to head back to you. But there, there are a couple here and there. Um, sometimes, if uh, there is like, a, like an old holdfast or something uh, on the surface of the rock too, that can be very sharp. Uh -huh. So that's that's where the gloves come in play. Uh, but, um, yeah, there was one dive we did in the northeast Lao Basin where we uh, picked up a bunch of fresh dacitic glass oh, wow. and, uh, and it was it was very strange stuff because it had um, because it was glass it was a very disordered internal structure and it turned out it had a lot of internal stress still in it so it fragmented really easily and it had all these edges on it that just like razor it, sharp it, yeah I, I just uh, Anytime I handled them, I'd end up with a few paper cuts and like, Gosh. yeah, it was, it was, um, shards something. of very fine glass on it. It's like when fiberglass is around. And Not quite fiberglass. It was, it was actually really different. Um, oh, yeah. like what, what looked like some, uh, very shallow angles, uh, that it would break at, but, uh, at the point where those angles intersected, it was still really, really sharp despite the obtuse angle. And it would just like, it would just cut you. Wow. So, uh, yeah, I had to be extremely gentle handling those. Playing with ancient broken glass from the seafloor. <laughs> no, that was that was actually pretty new. It was, it was very young stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, here we're not likely to encounter something like that because uh, it's it's pretty unusual for uh, glasses in seawater environments to, to stay long. glassy. They, they yeah. devitrify. Yeah. Um, but also, I wouldn't expect to see something quite like that. Dacitic glass is rare.
Yeah. I'm gonna quick zoom on that if we can. Um, no, I was I was still talking. I don't know if uh, there might have been some interference. And a shrimp friend. Yeah, I hear the geology is pretty interesting. It looks like we have some intercalated uh, lava flows and uh, hyaloclastite uh, beds. No, it might be we might have some uh, zoanthids here right underneath this as well. And we're going to zoom? Um, that looks interesting. And look at all those squat lobsters as well and hydroids. Pretty impressive to see all this. Uh, there's a lot from you to grab. We might have some small anemones on the the bottom of these rocks, or I'm not seeing anything connecting them, so I'm not going to call them stoloniferans. But we do have some small pink corals or anemones yeah, on the bottom of some of these rocks yeah. as well. Yeah. And I'm loving the Atlanta view right now. Yeah, oh, that, that is, is amazing. amazing. Over here. Yeah, that it's is. incredible. Okay. I can grab a foothold. What a nice sponge and uh, oh yeah, that's a good bamboo too. Fantastic. Oh, and look at that beautiful sponge there. Is that a calophagus? Um, maybe. It looks like I don't see like any like you know those holes that are usually from bolosomas. Mm. It's more mm, words. Sorry. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. A unit of a sponge. <laughs> a unit of a sponge, yeah. No, fantastic. Ah, it's not in my quick sponge guide here. You, oh, have, no. a, you have a quick sponge guide that you haven't shared with Common us? Common animals <laughs> of the deep Pacific. Uh, I think you have one of those on your desktop. Try again. Do you not? I'm not seeing one. Hmm. Oh, there's an Alaska. I found there's a field guides tab, and there's an Alaskan sponge Aleutian Island archipelago sponges. So, I might flip through that later. It's just a little bit further north of here. Just a bit. Just a wee bit. Just a bit. Yeah, this, this deposit is wild. I think, yeah, it looks like uh, alternating hyaloclastites and lava flows here. So, this is a this is pretty near vent. So this the saddle point is probably related to some nearby uh, like late stage volcanic cone or something, and it's just kind of alternating between uh, some of these high energy or perhaps a uh, sin emplacement of uh, lava flows and some of those high energy hyaloclastite deposits. It's interesting because I was uh, Dr. Val. I know you're familiar the cocoa crater on yeah. the and the Kaiva coastline. I was just kind of reflecting that this kind of layered. It looks formation a lot like that, uh, doesn't looked it? a lot like this, and right, right, of course, right there on the edge of a of what would have been a vent yeah. several million years ago. I, I don't recall that we see so many lava flows there, but we do see very similar uh, volcano sedimentary layering in the in the yeah. tephra. Interesting. And yeah, it's creating this. Uh, and yeah, you're seeing differential weathering here, which is why you're getting these uh, these these. Uh, like sheets that are kind of sticking out of the side here, and that's creating all those great ledges for these uh, uh, corals and sponges to grow. Oh, wow, that's a pretty thick sequence. So what is that? This was active for a while. So you're what I'm what I'm hearing from you is that that you're getting these layers of. Yeah. Um, these are these. This is part of an eruptive sequence over some period of time. It's it's pretty thick too, so it looks like uh, this this was an active area for a long time. I don't know exactly how long. I, I can't I can't do geochronology through a camera, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, this is a this is a very busy place as far as eruptions were concerned. Wow, so many many eruptions over time that cooled yeah. differently and created these different layers? Yeah, so some volcano sedimentary processes here, what looks like some uh, pieces of lava flows intercalated here and there. Uh, so kind of alternating between lava flows and um, 
Yeah, volcano sedimentary deposits. Wow. Very dynamic landscape. Yeah. So Bang. probably probably part of this, some of the later stages of volcanism would be uh, would be my guess. Something uh, approximating what we would call the Louisville style volcanism, maybe the uh, the late rift stage. Maybe. Are you stupid? Where where does Louisville style come from? Um, so it's it's kind of the other extreme of uh, hotspot uh, volcanic stages, like the the sort of the life cycle of a hotspot volcano. Um, that's it's on the opposite end of the spectrum from uh, Hawaiian style volcanic stages. Uh, uh, with Hawaiian style, there's there's four defined stages, which uh, variably express at uh, the, the uh, different volcanoes that comprise the Hawaiian Islands. And then, uh, yeah, with Louisville style, that's a, a lower flux plume. It's not quite as powerful or strong as uh, Hawaii, actually nowhere near. And uh, there you end up with uh, uh, presumably a, a pre-shield phase, a phase where the volcano is just starting to build. So that would be kind of akin to uh, what Kamaehua Kanaloa is doing. And then you have the shield phase. Um, and then uh, uh, once you get into these uh, uh, later waning stages of activity after the bulk of the volcano is built up, uh, you get into something called the caldera forming stage where you end up with the summit caldera uh, collapses. And then uh, uh, the, the latest stage is a rift stage where you get uh, little pockets of uh, volcanism, little volcanic yeah, cones that, uh, Keeps uh, that emerge yeah. on the, the rift zones of the volcano. And that's that's kind of the last gasp of volcanism on those. Wow. Whereas with Hawaiian style volcanism, you get the pre-shield phase, the main shield phase. So um, yeah, pre-shield would be Kamehua Kanaloa, uh, which we which was formerly known as Luihi. Uh, main shield phase, which is what uh, Mauna Loa and uh, Kilauea are in. And then you get into uh, post shield after that. Uh, and at that point, the uh, Can major we part. Zoom? Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, post shield is uh, a, it's a transition from the main shield phase, um, largely assumed to be temporarily continuous, so like no erosive uh, uh, boundaries or anything like that. Um, which uh, volcanoes like uh, Mauna Kea and Haleakala are in, and uh, then after after that, there's uh, assumed to be a uh, volcanic hiatus. Um, it, which can be variable uh, in length, but usually on the order of uh, you know a couple of millions of years, uh, where you get into the post-erosional or the rejuvenated phase, which may be related to uh, it's, it's not very well understood uh, to be fair what uh, that that volcanic stage is, but some people think it's related to perhaps uh, uh, changes in the flexure of the overlying uh, uh, crust related to. Yep. Uh, can I get Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And that that flexure is related to the plume um, and how it uh, kind of pushes up against the crust and uh, uh, sort of bulges things upward. And then as uh, uh, you know, the the crust continues to move over the plume, it kind of comes back down. And then there might be a little bit of a secondary uh, flexure related to that um, that deformation. And where things kind of flex back up for their back, you might get a little bit of decompression melt generated that forms that uh, rejuvenated stage. But that's that's not the only way that that might be done because there's there's always possibilities for like secondary melt zones uh, way back in the plume conduit where it gets kind of smeared out or some other potential mechanisms. So it's it's something we we don't really understand that well that last gasp of volcanism. And where wh where would be the boundaries of oh, I, I think I the boundaries seem so clear for the pre and pre shield shield and post shield phase, but this rejuvenated phase. Our post-erosional phase is—is is that what we're uh, looking at in the far northwestern Hawaiian Islands? Is that still um, qualifying, or are yeah, those have really those moved really on true. from being anywhere in the volcanic <laughs> phase at all? Uh, those, those are probably long and active. Um, where we see rejuvenated volcanism is, uh, yeah. yeah, we have some examples of that on Oahu. Mm -hmm. So, like the Honolulu volcanics and uh, uh, like Diamond Head, Cocoa Head. Uh, punch bowl, those are all uh, rejuvenated stage activity. So after the shield has sort of moved on to Haleakala or somewhere on Moko Keave, but then there's still some some venting there's and things happening. There's still some stuff that's on. hot. 
okay. in, the, in the volcanic system. And that we still sense. think there's some stuff that's probably warm under Oahu, but is that going to do anything in our lifetimes? Oh, pretty, pretty much no. Oh. It may not ever do anything again, for all we know. Uh, that would make a pretty big mess. It would, <laughs> but I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. So there's like a tiny hey, back Daniel, can oh. you take a note uh, for time for just shots on Atlanta? Sure. I've been capturing a few, but... Okay, yeah, yeah. just because he's painting over here. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. You're doing a great job. That's what we call them when we're... I shoot a lot of motocross, and when they're getting those, like, beauty shots of the bikes, mm -hmm. we call it painting the bike. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, you can actually see the the layering in the Atalanta view, Atalanta view as well. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what exactly stage that was, but... It, 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 it may broadly correspond with some sort of a later rift stage if we're uh, looking at Louisville-style volcanism here. Okay. And the reason I lean toward that over uh, uh, Hawaiian-style volcanic activity is because uh, the Hawaiian hotspot is an outlier in nearly every aspect of its uh, uh, activity. And um, it's actually much more common to have uh, for a plume to be not so strong and uh, 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 not produce as much melt as the Hawaiian plume does. And thus it's, it's uh, more likely to uh, uh, go through those Louisville or maybe even Easter hotspot um, is another example of uh, stages of activity. Oh, wow. Although we do see Hawaiian style uh, stages at some other places too. So um, you can see that in uh, uh, some Beautiful places in like sponge. Is it uh, Samoa uh, on certain islands, uh, Galapagos? This is cool. Looks like we're getting into some diversity of uh, sponges as well as corals in here. We sure we're are. We're seeing some some of the some of the black corals that we from previously, but also several different bamboos and primnoids, um, and many different sponges as well, which is pretty interesting. Um, these low sponges here, we haven't. We haven't really seen as many of them uh, moving up. I don't think we've gotten a zoom on those uh, yet. So if we could, that'd be fantastic. Um, yeah, it's pretty interesting to see how these are different. Um, and they're also, they seem to be attached to some smaller cobbles. Um, we've got some cup corals on here as well. And we haven't seen a repeat of those uh, stolons, which is unfortunate. Well, yeah. I think they would be pretty pretty difficult to get a good look at. Yeah. Yeah, those are hard to spot. Mm -hmm. Oh, these rocks are loose. They are quite loose, yes. Yeah, good, good tallest pile here, which makes it all the more interesting that there's uh, a, a density of uh, uh, life here, but it looks right. like this is more in place out outcrop stuff around here. So right. that's where you're likelier to get stuff that can uh, hang on for dear life and not have to worry about tipping over once you get big enough. Right, and it's but it's interesting. We've got several of these corals attached onto some cobbles that might be, as well as these sponges. Um, the sponges are pretty lightweight, though, aren't they? Well, yeah, but if your cobble rolls over, it's yeah. still, still going to take okay. the sponge with it. Right. Um, uh, I don't think these would move a whole lot without being perturbed. So, I mean, I could see some of these corals getting heavy enough to tip over. I think this might be another unstocked you put tell it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking yeah. too. At first I was like furry, but then I saw the little, the little holes. All the, like, yeah, the yeah. irregular um, holes. Yeah. Looks like maybe a primnoid on the left and a real bamboo in front of us. This is really interesting, all these different corals and several bamboos on the right there. Um, is this, um, is this full zoom? Yeah, that's Yeah, good. I'm trying to get closer. Okay, awesome, thank you. You want to go wide for that? Yeah. Okay, go on wide.
Wow, this is really, this is pretty amazing to see all these different. Thank you, sir. Amazing, Zach. Yeah, thank you. Beautiful. That is very cool. Yeah. We've oh, wow, what a beautiful zoom. Yeah, we've got some stolens there. Yeah. Stol stolen difference. Are That's these true. the ones that you guys were interested in? They aren't so looking yellow. exactly the same. Yeah, those yeah. were kind of a, like a yellow, right? very they translucent green. Yellow, yeah. The cup corals are beautiful as well, as well as the primoid and bamboos. Yeah, that's looking like a... Oh, wait, 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 wait. <gasps> oh. We got it. Can we, can we hold here for a bit? Awesome, thank you. Awesome spot. Um, wow. Do we want to try to sample this? Because uh, our onshore team is interested in a collection of these uh, green stolons. I think we might be able to get those. Um. Yeah. Are you slurping? I think you think so. They said rock, right? Yeah, I don't. I think if you slurped it, it might. Um, it might disturb the structure of these and I think that could yeah, potentially we'd, be important. We might want to try to grab um, the rock that they're on. Yeah. We haven't seen that many of these. Um, I think I took a picture of how many we're supposed to see before yeah, we take square a square up on it more. Colony like these are also very hard to spot though. Yeah. But we do, we can collect um, if it's something uh, uh, unusual, too. I believe so, yes. Um, we can, and, uh, and, I'm, and I'm thankful for the team that uh, is also asking whether we should. Yes. I want to say it's like 10. Yeah, it's, uh, we're supposed to be able to see uh, um, 10 um, for one specimen, one whole specimen to be taken um, for the, the permit, which, um, so I think what, there's a couple options. One thing we could do is we could look around at several of these different rocks and see if we can't find some more. And then see if maybe there's a rock that has... But I, I think there was also something in the permit about being able to uh, take a sample if it's, take one if it's uh, something brand new, correct? We may need to go confirm this. Um, I think it's, um, if we see it again, um, if it's like another one after like a really, if it's like a rare one, I think, but I, I could which, be wrong Which too. is the situation here, yeah. according yeah. to our onshore team. Okay. So, do we, do you have a copy of the permit um, over there? Ah, you, you have it. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what I'm looking so at. Let's go off. Yeah. <laughs> It's just a picture of the sample yeah, that's, information. that's fine. Um, so are we going to try for that one, or are we going to move on? One specimen can be taken, removed, or possessed. If an abundance assessment cannot be ascertained, or fewer than 10 such specimens are present, cumulative during the course of the collection event per island or atoll. Yeah, so this is okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we should do a collection here, since uh, this, is, uh, this is of interest to our onshore team. Okay. We'll see if Connor gives it to us. Should I drag it a little bit closer, maybe? Will we reach from here, Rob? Well, if you put it in the center of the basket, 
like maybe two feet forward, that would be ideal. I just don't want to crush that. Yeah. Good thing to do when you when you plant like that is just cycle your auto heading, just turn it off and back on right away. There you go. Okay. Just zeroes it out. Uh, okay. Wiggle around. Yeah. And then I can't see it. Can we get a zoom, Amber? Yeah. I think it's this one right here. Yep, right there. Beautiful. As uh, we've shared before with a number of our viewers, uh, we are operating under. Um, zoom out. What? Operating under permit here in Papahanaumokuakea with some strict guidelines. Yeah, that's too far away. Yeah. And uh, and also Try operating with. See if I can scoot yeah, a little bit point more. Point down a little so you can see the front of the basket. I mean, you're gonna have to just kind of hop over this guy. Yeah. Yeah, that bamboo was down before we got before was you it? got there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just right. just so you know. Operating with deep care and respect for all of life here. Uh, yeah, kind of favor the right side. Yeah, I think there's a ledge right there to my left. I'm a little bit concerned about the rock that the bamboo is attached to. Mm -hmm. I think it's like right there, see where the left green laser's at? Yeah, could right we, under the lasers. Could we do a good zoom on that too? See if we can't. Can we get a zoom amber? Yeah, because the, um, the features probably won't. Oh, yeah. So I think this is all one piece here. It's just I'm worried that this might be sitting on top of that. So it's a little bit of a tricky Actually, angle. Actually, it might be separate because there seems to be this rock that's coming down this way. Yeah, I think maybe. this might be the edge. And it looks like there might be one or two on mm, that. It looks pretty continuous here, though. So that could just be an angle, too. Ah, so I think, to be fair, I don't look at many rocks. So. <laughs> no worries. That is, that is a larger one, too, so that could be a little complicated. Mm -hmm. So we may have to consider alternative strategies, too. Okay, zoom in. Go ahead. That there? Yeah. Okay. So we're thinking that it may be separate from this rock? It's pretty cemented. What do you think, though? I try to move it, see if it's going to move that one to the right. Actually, you know what? That's only, they're not even on that oh, one. Oh, it is a rock oh. underneath. OK. Um, is that, uh, that's about, is that 10 centimeters? A little bit more, I think. Mm -hmm.
might have to move that one on top off and then yeah Is there a nudie brig or a slug there? Oh no, that's just debris. I did see a small worm that was crawling through that cylinder. Okay, yeah, I saw that too. Could be a slug. Ooh. Ooh. All right. You putting this up front? Yeah. Uh, you have both four bio boxes open. Okay. So we'll roll the camera back with the, the toggle switch just to the right of the, of the, yeah, you pan and tilt just to the right of it. There's a rocker, black rocker. Where, right here? Oh, okay, right here. Over, no, more towards the stick. Okay. Oh, yeah, this back. Okay. okay. Yeah, so roll the camera back. So any side is good? Beautiful collection. Beautiful. Thank awesome you. Work. Mahalo. Um, Nav confirming that was sample zero six three. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All of our scientists and expedition alaka'i do their due diligence to follow our permit and every crew member pri prior to coming on board, um, this expedition attended a permit briefing, a cultural briefing, a permit briefing. Um, so it just speaks volumes to uh, OET's initiative to kind of uh, move forward with ocean research with intention care and purpose uh, to the people in the spaces and we've been having really great conversations on board about um, building that trust and that connection to people place culture um, and also walking and navigating that path carefully with caution and reverence hey, yo. Zach we're gonna be heading back up this way okay yeah, we, we find that of utmost importance to uh, minimize the extractive uh, kind of sampling yes. as awesome much as work. possible. Awesome work, Zach. Thank you. Yeah, amazing. Nice work, team.